we have now encountered our first problem. In the last video, we finished installing our new tile 44 millimeter wastegate for our up pipe. We also assembled our equal length headers down below. But when we went to go ahead and mock up the turbo without the V-band flame, of course, I realized a big issue. The current downpipe I have is not gonna fit and or the power steering lines are in the way. So I think the plan today is to figure that out. Hopefully I don't need a new downpipe and or up pipe. I did check another person on YouTube that did install a BNM fab kit for a rotated forester, I believe. The up pipe was in a similar position as well as the wastegate. I'm hoping it's not a super hard fix. Let me get to work and I'll explain and check back up with you guys in just a sec. So I ended up removing the up pipe completely and then taking it back to the vise just because I loosened the V-band clamp that holds the wastegate onto the up pipe or vice versa. And you pretty much need to orient the wastegate just like this. The dump tube needs to be pointing back here where the passenger side lower control arm is going to go. That's where your dump tube's pretty much going to hit. And right now the up pipe is loose. It still has some play. Uh, you notice that the downpipe right now is currently kind of resting on the wastegate. I still need to figure out that situation. We have about a finger uh, width of clearance between the hard AC line here and the downpipe. And then notice the downpipe is supported up by the uh, bolt right there. And there is a bracket on the downpipe specifically. I believe there is a little bit of, I guess, a margin as far as how far up or down you want to move the downpipe. And I think for my case, I need to move it up. Um, but besides that, everything is looking pretty good. The V-band clamp for the header to the up pipe is on. It's not tightened down all the way. But uh, overall, I think we're making pretty good progress. We still need to install our new gaskets and as well as our oil drain line that's still right here. We need to set up before we actually mount the turbo. It's turbo time. I'm probably dating myself with that reference, but if you get it, you're awesome. Okay, this thing's pretty much ready to get thrown on the car with two things that we still need to take care of. The oil drain line, this goes to the factory location on the passenger side head. And then we have a huge AN fitting right here that's gonna go on the bottom of the turbo. This turbo was on a 08 STI, so everything should be already clocked where it needs to go. We did order some new 1 8 of an inch MPT to quarter inch hose bar that we're gonna be replacing for the compressor as well as the electronic boost control solenoid, just so the vacuum lines are all gonna be quarter inch. All right, looks like this thing is getting yeah, it's going. I think this is a good stopping point to wrap up this video, but let's go over every single thing that I did in this video so you guys don't feel lost. Some things have changed. Everything is bolted up. All the V-band clamps are on. The one from the header to the up pipe, the up pipe to the bottom of the turbo here, and then the down pipe to the exhaust housing of the turbine as well. The oil line is in place. The support bolts or brackets for the up pipe are mounted onto the head. That is secure. The bung that was left open originally on the down pipe is on. We have our new fitting from Amazon on the compressor cover, which in my case was 1 8 of an inch MPT to quarter inch hose barb because that is the vacuum line we're gonna be running. Like I said, everything is now bolted up. Everything is secured. I believe everything is oriented correctly. Fingers crossed that we don't have to undo any of our work. The headers are on the car, they're on the block. Then we have our up pipe connection to the header, that V-band is on. Then we have our V-band from the turbo to the up pipe, that is on. Our V-band from the exhaust housing to the down pipe is also on. We have not connected the rest of the exhaust uh, system. I'm gonna do that off camera. You guys are probably not interested in that at this point, it's super, super straightforward. For those of you that are wondering, is my tile wastegate touching the down pipe? I thought it was, but it's not. You guys see there's a small gap right there, but that's gonna give us enough clearance. Now, something I should mention, I did not tighten down the fittings for vacuum lines um, on the wastegate itself. That is still there. That still needs to get tightened down and routed, like I said. This originally was left open, so I took the bung that I had left over, plugged that up, and I connected the oil feed line on the top. That is not going anywhere. The one for the block is right here. Uh, right behind this bracket. And then the support brackets for the up pipe are now bolted onto the head here and here, this super rusty, ugly bolt, but you know what, it works. The dump tube's also back on in case I did not mention that. And I think everything for the most part is set up and it's ready to go. It really wasn't too bad as soon as I started piecing things together. 
One thing I also will mention as far as the downpipe goes, I pretty much scooted it all the way up like this and then forward. I really didn't have to force any of the V-band clamps and that's because I left everything loose and that's what I recommend you guys doing if you're doing a rotated setup. Um, this is gonna make your life 10 times easier. So this is how you hook up an electronic boost control solenoid with a setup like this. This is gonna work for different turbos. They're all gonna be the same pretty much. So you'll have your turbo, your external wastegate down there, and you have your boost control solenoid. So this top port, you're gonna have one, two, where my thumb is, three, and that's where they're numbered right here on the boost solenoid. This one, you can pretty much run open. Uh, I have a breather filter so crap doesn't get in there. Port number two, just like the stock configuration, you guys probably can't see my writing, that thing says this one goes to the wastegate. That's where it used to go to my internal wastegate. So you're gonna do the same. Port number two, this vacuum line, goes to your lower half of the hemisphere here where that vacuum fitting is, and then that's connected, that's done. The upper portion of the hemisphere, that vacuum fitting, needs to stay open. It needs to read atmospheric pressure, but what people can do, or what you can do as well, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook up a vacuum line to the top port but I'm gonna leave it open. I'm not gonna connect it to anything just so debris and stuff doesn't get in. And lastly, the top port goes to the compressor cover. Similar configuration, guys, nothing really changes. I know it's a bit weird with the external gate wastegate and things are kind of in different positions, but this is where you kind of have to get creative because the whole system pretty much loops back. So you have wastegate or bottom half wastegate to this, and then we're gonna go in, and then we're gonna come out of this, and then this is gonna go to our compressor cover. And that's pretty much the entire configuration. I hope that made sense to you guys. And if it doesn't, please leave me a comment down below with any questions you may have. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the exhaust system down below underneath the car because then we can finish the rest of the time or spend the rest of the time buttoning up the top end of the car. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to completing this build. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, like I've said. And I was a little stressed out, admittedly, yesterday when I left because I was like, fuck, you know, things are not fitting. I'm gonna have to spend more money and blah, blah, blah. But Things are looking good. Just had to move some things around. It's a learning process after all. And let me know if you have any questions about going rotated because I feel like uh, I can definitely speak to my experience more than what I'm giving you guys right now on camera. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave me a like and stay subscribed because you won't want to miss out when this thing finally hits the freaking dyno. Hopefully things go well, but who knows? It is a Subaru after all. Anyway, catch you guys on the next one.